Well, now we're going to solve another approach of dividend policy, another model of dividend policy rather that is known as Modigilani and Miller model. Modigilani and Miller model is basically categorized as a dividend irrelevance model. With this model, Mr. Modigilani and Mr. Miller prove that the market value per share does not directly relate with payment of dividend. Let's follow the formula. Under Modigliani and Miller model, the market value of 50 share can be categorized equals to P1 equals to P0 within bracket 1 plus K minus D. P1 represents basically market value per share at the end of the year, whereas the P0 is represent over market value per share at the beginning of the year. K is as usual known as cost of capital and D is considered as dividend per share. P1 represents Remember, market value per share at the end and P0 represent market value per share at the beginning. Let's solve one question under Modigliani and Miller approach. Earnings Limited has furnished the following details. Cost of capital is 10%. Market price per share at the beginning is rupees 100. The form is contemplating the declaration of Dividend of rupees 8 per share. Calculate market price per share under MM approach. Dividend is declared. Dividend is not declared. Let's solve the question. Two specific answers we have to count if the dividend declared and if the dividend not declared. Let's jot down the data one after one. Cost of capital is 10%. The first information the K is 10%, 0.10. Market price per share at the beginning is rupees 100. Then, of course, P0 is available, that is rupees 100. And the firm is contemplating the declaration of a dividend of rupees 8 per share. Then, the dividend we can consider as rupees 8. Now, first we consider that the company declares the dividend, the company is paid the dividend, and based on that, we are trying to calculate the market value of shares. Say option one if dividend declared P1 equals to P0 that is 100 within bracket 1 plus K, K is 0 0.10 minus T, D is rupees 8. Then once we count that, we are getting over here. 110 minus 8 or rupees 102 and option 2 if dividend not declared in that case P1 is 100 1 plus cost of capital is 10% or 0 0.10 then here you have to consider instead of 8 it is nil. That means we are getting two specific value of dividend. One is rupees 100, another one is rupees 0. Now it is 0, then ultimately we are getting over here rupees 110. Now, depending upon the options, if the company pay dividend, the market value per share counts rupees 102. If the company not declare the dividend, the market value per share counts as rupees 110. A chemical company belongs to a big class for which the appropriate cost of capital is 10%. Then K is 10%. It currently has 50,000 equity shares selling at rupees 100 each. Okay. The firm is contemplating the declaration of dividend of rupees 6 per share at the current financial year. Okay. That means at the beginning we can consider that P0 is how much? Rupees 100. And the dividend is also considering over here rupees 6. Given the assumption of MM, that means molecular meter, what will be the price of the shares at the end of the year if the dividend declared and if the dividend 
not declared. There is another part of the question that I will explain later part. First we will solve the first part of the given question. Now one by one let us plot over here. The cost of capital K that is 10% 0.10 then D we consider over here as rupees 6 and another one is also there rupees 0 because if the dividend declared and if the dividend not declared two options are there we are going to calculate and P0 market price per share is also available to us rupees 100 now one by one let's calculate if dividend declared in that case P1 equals to P0 that is 100 1 plus K 0 0.10 minus D6 then you are getting over here rupees 104 this is for option 1 in case of option 2 if dividend not declared in that case e1 equals to 100 1 plus 0 0.10 minus 0 now you are getting over here rupees 110 two options are there if the company declared dividend we are getting the figure of 104 if the company not declared dividend we are getting the figure of 110 based on these two options two specific figure we have counted now let's concentrate the second part of the question it is very much indicative if the company pays the dividend that means it is asking us that the company paid the dividend and at the same time the company has a net income of rupees 5 lakhs and makes a new investment of rupees 10 lakhs okay during the period how many shares the company required to issue this is the line how many shares the company required to issue that means that market value play a uh, implication in case of number of shares when the company is issuing shares to join down the capital then of course the market value per share is going to be affected now for this we have to follow another formula or rather how to calculate the number of new shares issued can be represented as say number number of new equity share issued t is m equals to i minus minus n into t divided by p1 1 by 1 let me plot over here where i equals to i stands for new investment e stands for total earnings n stands for number of existing equity shares and d as usual d stands for dividend per share where i stands for new investment e stands for total earnings d stands for as usual dividend per share and n stands for existing equity share whereas n stands for number of new equity shares now, now if that kind of question asks how many new shares required to issue in that case we are going to follow this particular formula based on that formula we can solve the second portions this is mentioned in the question that assuming that the company pays the dividend that is why you just consider rupees 104 to calculate the number of existing equity share issued one by one now first of all i what is the amount of new investment over here it is mentioned over there 10 lakhs rupees i equals to rupees 10 lakhs next e total earnings total earnings is also available over here it is mentioned over here how much 5 lakhs rupees then n Number of existing equity shares. Number of existing equity shares is available. 
that is 50,000, which is also mentioned. Then D, D is dividend per share because we consider that the, that the company pay dividend and D we can consider over here and pay 6. Now considering all such information, we can calculate the number of mean initial issues depending upon the given conditions. I should be 10 lakhs minus earnings is 5 lakhs minus L into D existing share is 50,000 and D is rupees 6 because the company if the company declared dividend D is rupees 6 whole divided by P1 remember when the company declared dividend our P1 is 104 you can write over here even P1 is 104 rupees now we are getting over here 7692 shares once we solve that equation, we are getting over here 7, 6, 9.